Today is Wednesday, April 15th, and I am here with um, Matteo Guidoni. Matteo, thank you so much for joining me this morning. Thank you, Kerry. So, Matteo, I, I have a question. Uh, where, where exactly are you right now, and how have these recent events altered the structure of your, of your life and work? Well, um... Of course, I'm at home, as anybody else in this moment, at least here in Italy. And um, this, this condition is not particularly new for me, in the sense that I have been used uh, to work from home or uh, in a kind of mixed uh, uh, home and office condition. Mm. The name of my office, Salotto Buono, is, uh, is let's say particularly linked to this condition as Salotto Buono is the good living room. Uh, and that's because it started all in my, my, my house, you know, in my living room. And then the living room slowly became an office. And I think it's a story that is uh, common to many, many practitioners uh, of my generation, at least. And... Um, I'm lucky enough to be in a beautiful, beautiful house in a small uh, uh, studio space in a building that was built by, designed uh, by Piero Bottoni in Milan. So it's a building of uh, 1953. Um, that was part of a larger, uh, a larger plan for Milan. Let's say it, it was not a plan, but it was an idea of uh, part of Milan as a garden city. Uh, so this, uh, this condominium, which is a big slab, it's uh, like 20, 20 floors uh, full of apartments, like 150 apartments, uh, is, uh, is a sort of uh, the, the only realized part of that, uh, of that project, of that study. I'm saying this because uh, it's a really particular condition in the sense that it's out of scale in this part of the city and it's... Uh, um, a sort of uh, modern vessel that uh, was, uh, let's say, uh, trapped in a completely different kind of uh, city than what was expected. And, uh, and now in this particular moment, uh, I'm working here and living here with my girlfriend. We thought we were going to kill us, each other, in a couple of days at the beginning of the lockdown, but then we we managed to, yeah, uh, to work out uh, quite well. And uh, we feel the presence of these 20 floors be above, above us. Uh, we feel the presence of these uh, other families, but we don't see them. You know, somehow we have these huge uh, uh, pillars in the room that carry the load of all this uh, mini city, let's say. Um, from time to time, we see somebody uh, looking out of the window or the balcony because I don't know if uh, it was there, but uh, we had this fashion of uh, this kind of flash mobs uh, where everybody is singing together from, uh, from the balconies, you know, in some, some moments of the day just to, I don't know, sort of ritual, sort of voodoo against the COVID. Uh, but then... Uh, but then it's really, it's really weird to feel the presence of this community, which is uh, not a community, it's just an addition of, uh, of people. And uh, it happened to me in these days to compare it with, uh, uh, with this uh, novel of Ballard, uh, High Rise, or um, Condominium, I don't know. Um, when you see there is a sort of homogeneous community uh, that works well, they, they are all doing their own things in their own uh, little flats. Uh, and then suddenly it may happen that, I don't know, there is a bottle falling from, uh, from a balcony and then that gives uh, the start from a chain of uh, events that can, let's say, dramatically um, put the community or, or this kind of uh, mini city into into crisis you know, in a sort of uh, uh, in a, with a sort of retroactive uh, series of uh, of action and counteractions that led to a complete uh, a failure of of this idea of this modern idea of the mini city uh, organized around a certain uh, minimal uh, services 
Um, so that's, that's just, I, I, I start with this observation because I think in these days more than changing my, um, let's say my way of working, I think they really changed the perspective of what I look, uh, what I see around myself, uh, of the space I'm living in. We had organized, reorganized the space of the house a little bit because we had to make space for a, for a little uh, a gym. Let's see, we, it became a Casa Palestra where from time to time we, uh, because we, lo we love to run and it's impossible in these days, so we decided to work out a little bit just to uh, keep in shape because we, of course we cook a lot and we have to, to do something to counterbalance it. Um, so it's, um, this new condition of course introduced a completely new time frame and uh, a time frame both on uh, on let's say the short term and the medium long term the short term because the daily routine is is reorganized um, i am spending let's say half of the time now giving online le lectures to my students in milan and in genova uh, it requires much more time i i understood that uh, it's uh, it's really a longer process and but it's working quite well i mean i didn't expect it what was going to be so so smooth this transition the students adapted very uh, in a very smart way to the new conditions uh, we are not uh, working with models anymore they start to make models for the first days but then they they just uh, like the the material for the model was was over, and they had to 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 switch to another mode of production. Um, and then I don't know uh, in the in the short time frame, I have more possibilities of uh, I'm studying much more, I'm reading much more, I'm drawing, I'm hand drawing, and uh, but I'm working, I'm working a lot, um, and my profession. Um, let's say was not really affected in a sense that I was in, when, when it all started, I was um, in the moment in which I had to move to another office space, uh, to a larger one and reorganize everything. And that uh, process simply uh, was frozen. I don't know, it's still suspended and it's waiting for, for its start. It's, it's just like freezing an image. It didn't really interrupt uh, uh, some activities because I have already closed that uh, activities in order to uh, move to that uh, new phase. So I'm still waiting for this new phase to begin. But of course, I'm working a lot in collaboration with other people from home, each, each of us from their own home offices. And yeah. yeah. So, I, so perhaps it's a, it's a good moment of, of uh, transition in a way. Um, you're in a, at a kind of critical point of transition, which aligned with the current events. And I'm wondering if you could, um, and again, it's early, Matteo. I mean, we're like you only a couple of weeks into this. And we don't really know how long this will yeah. last and what the long-term impacts will be. But um, as you sit in your um, apartment and, and work and draw and read, have you had any thoughts about how these recent events um, may influence uh, our thinking about architecture or maybe the future design of cities, if any? Yes, um, well, starting from the considerations about the new layout of uh, teaching, um, I must say that I am teaching in, at the moment in two very different schools. Uh, one is um, public school, it's a university in Genova, and one is a private school in Milan, the Domus Academy. Uh, while in Genova you have mainly uh, students from, uh, Italian students, and mainly from that, uh, that area, or this area of the Northern Italy. In Domus Academy, um, we have no Italian students. Uh, they are just from all over the world. And they come to Milan for uh, one, one year, to study to have that uh, master master degree and 
So when the, uh, when the lockdown started, uh, just before the lockdown, uh, all these uh, foreign students just escaped to their own countries. So um, uh, because they somehow felt, they sensed the, that the situation was getting worse here in Italy, so they really escaped and uh, and and that and um, let's say it was quite difficult to reorganize uh, group works in that condition uh, i usually do at least uh, uh, groups of uh, of two uh, so I, I used to work with groups and uh, and now some of these groups are uh, i don't know one one student is in india and the other one is in turkey and they have to communicate uh, among themselves before like communicating with me and with the school uh, and i have to say they are making a huge effort in uh, let's say in doing this um, but it's true that uh, we are not um, uh, structured in a way like even if in normal times let's say uh, our our studios are not uh, uh, really offering a studio space the, to the students, a uh, space where they can constantly work uh, uh, close to each other and uh, share all the time, sharing their, their work and their thoughts. Uh, it's, uh, it's a bit more um, individualistic, let's say, uh, a bit less than when I was uh, studying in Venezia, uh, because then you, you simply had to do your own work and you did it at home or uh, somewhere else. Uh, but these Italian students, I can see that they are more into this uh, kind of uh, mentality. Uh, working from home is completely, uh, it's completely normal for them. Uh, they can communicate much easier and uh, easily, let's say. And, uh, and they, yeah, and they, and I think they engage with uh, with the new kind of communication with me, with with the, with the teachers. Uh, well, they feel much more personally involved in the in the communication, in talking to to them. No, uh, for me, it's it's a bit difficult, like in, because I am used to really physically uh, act somehow in the in the space of the um, of the class. Um, sketching uh, moving models around uh, and so on gesticulating and all of that and i feel completely especially giving kind of frontal lectures is is really weird it looks like uh, uh, having a monologue in front of uh, <laughs> in front of a black screen um, I think I'm not saying nothing particular new. Uh, I think we are all experiences this kind of uh, new new kind of interactions. A lot of uh, can you hear me? I don't hear you. Can you see me? <laughs> You're free and, and all of that. Um, but I think I mean I think the quality of the uh, lectures or communication I can give increased a little bit in these days when I am able to, to, to study much more, to prepare my lecture more consistently. I, uh, maybe I have less, um, um, let's say, casual events, interrupting, and I'm more, much more focused on it. So I'm, I'm really enjoying, and this is also part of my new time frame that I am trying to construct in working, you know, uh, spending certain uh, I, I mean, we, we have a sort of deadline now uh, or uh, yeah, the moment in which we will be able to go out of our houses again, it's, it's a sort of deadline and we are consciously or unconsciously building up our own uh, uh, schedule and uh, organizing it in a much more uh, consistent way and in a in more precise way. At least that's, that's what's happening to me. To me, it's really difficult to think uh, uh, in these uh, terms of um, like I'm I'm quite skeptical of uh, projects that uh, simply spill out of uh, a particular critical condition like the one we are living now. Um, I I'm not such a fan of this uh, instant uh, project. I am very critical 
uh, both on uh, uh, projects that are being set up by institutions, even educational institutions right now in Europe that uh, immediately want to, to, let's say, confront with these topics, to challenge what is the post-COVID condition and uh, what's going to happen in the future cities. We, we would like to formulate scenarios about the city. Uh, I, I really feel like I'm not uh, able to do it. Um, and then on the other side, I'm receiving a lot of invitation to participate in, in very, very silly, tiny, easy, busy curatorial projects, uh, asking me to draw the plan of my house, to connect to the other plans of the house and make a huge uh, non-stop uh, plan of the, of the COVID conditions. I am I'm really I'm really skeptical about this uh, kind of approach. I think uh, as intellectuals we always have to to put a bit of uh, not resistance but a, a, a bit of uh, um, friction uh, to this uh, temptation of just going with the news. You know? um, and in this sense, what I would like to propose is instead of uh, producing uh, new instant projects uh, is to um, is to look retroactively at uh, what you have done in the past few years and try to read and evaluate uh, the consistency of your work in light even of the current condition so for instance i was i was thinking about the series of projects that i happened to uh, develop in the past few years that are about temporary pavilions um, in which uh, I, I realized that I always um, question myself during like developing this project what is the meaning today of being physically present to an event that could be just uh, um, attended online you know? like an interview or, uh, uh, or a series of conversation or a seminar or a biennial, or a, an exhibition, or something like this. Um, so it, it seems to be a, a sort of uh, obvious question, but in fact, um, I, I realized that I always try to construct this project like, I don't know, I'm thinking about my Teatrino, for instance, in Milan of uh, um, a couple of years ago, that was meant to be as a sort of, uh, you know, an anatomical theater for, uh, for interviews in which I really tried to understand what was the role of the physical involvement of, uh, of the audience into that kind of event. And, um, and, and that pushed me to really think about this event not only in functional practical terms, but to read them as, um, as rituals. At, uh, and I think it's really important in this moment to think about the ritual dimension of architecture, meaning the series of actions that are physically taking place in a certain space in a specific time frame, and uh, yeah, and with uh, with uh, constructing a sort of uh, specific uh, community of people. If we don't think about this dimension uh, of the of the ritual. That is, after all, let's say one of the uh, sort of permanent uh, aspects of architecture. I think we just uh, get lost in uh, into a sort of bare, bold functionality and functionalism that uh, that is not really interesting to me. Yeah, I think actually, I think those are really. Um... Uh, I think interesting remarks. I think what I read into them is perhaps a warning to not um, to not easily jump on the bandwagon of the latest conversations or the latest trends, but perhaps to use this period um, for kind of introspection and for a deepening of one's own architectural project. And I think you, as a teacher and a practitioner, I think. Um, I think it would make a lot of sense that that type of comment comes from you. So I really appreciate um, the time that you've taken to speak with me. Um, I, I hope that you continue to be safe and be well as um, Italy re-engages uh, with the physical environment. You're a little bit ahead of us, so I'm optimistic that um, in sooner rather than later we will all be 
physically engaged in, in the city. Thank you so much, Mandy. Fantastic. Thanks to you. Uh, it was a great pleasure to talk to you.